Well, the Raiders are going to the playoffs. Big, dramatic win last night against the Chargers. Four wins in a row to go to the postseason. Welcome inside Raiders Press Conference Live. Kevin Bolliner alongside the great Eric <laughs> Allen. And wow, I yes. mean, what a game last night. What a roller coaster this team has come through when they've needed to all season. Yeah, long. what a victory Monday. You know, after all of the ups and downs of the game and of the season, this football team has found a way to uh, get into the playoffs, right? Change and adapt to uh, personnel changes, adapt to situations on the football field, and all of the stars. This is what I love about this team. All of the stars, the leaders, came to play. And you could see it pop up in each and every big moment. You know, our players, the Max Crosby's, DC, Hunter Renfro, they all came and played at a really high level in important times of the game. This football team has been playing playoff games basically for three weeks, right? And uh, really uh, put the Chargers, gave them, Chargers gave the Raiders everything they had, came down to the last second, and coach makes the right call. Carlson lines up, kicks a field goal, and everyone's excited. Six walk-off wins for the Raiders this year. That is unheard of, yeah. but also shows that this team has learned how to win when the game is on the line. Yeah, for sure, and that's all about character, all about learning from the previous years, right? The team, the players who have been on this team and saw those late season uh, collapses, you know, found a way to kind of transform, go from a passing football team to a more of a power run team when it really counted at the end of the season. That's what good playoff teams do. They adapt. They're able to kind of find different ways in winning football games. Well, it was an emotional night last night. We want to hear what interim head coach Rich Passaccia has to say on Monday. Coming up, you're going to hear from the coach about what his thoughts were on last night and his first thoughts on this Saturday. This program has been presented by Coors Light, an official beer of Raider Nation made to chill. Well, Rich Versace, a happy man, as is all of Raider Nation. You know, an interesting stat, a coach that has not the coach of the first week of the season took a team to the playoffs. First time it's been done in 60 years in the NFL. Rich Versace has done that. Let's hear from the coach. Okay. Afternoon, everybody. Um... I'd like to start off with uh, just a couple of notes about Max Crosby, that um, he was voted the um, Commitment to Excellence Award here by his teammates um, from the Raiders, and he's also been awarded the Craig Long Award, certainly by our, our local media, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. And then if I can remind everybody that, you know, Darren Wilder is our Man of the Year, Walter Pate Man of the Year candidate, and I know social media-wise people can still vote for that, so we, we certainly love... Um, him to be the award winner this year for all the things that he's done um, within the community and certainly within our organization as well. Um, that being said, the one injury report I have is at this particular time, Darius Phylon um, has a significant injury to the knee. We're not 100% sure exactly what it is. He's going through the uh, evaluations today with the uh, multiple doctors, and we'll know exactly what it is here as we get into um, Wednesday, but certainly we won't have him um, unfortunately, over the next uh, games that we play. And he was, um, he was on a roll. He's playing really well over the last three or four weeks, and, and uh, we're excited about the progress he was making. Um, so it's unfortunate for, for us and, and for him. Uh, with that, I'll, I'll take any questions you may have. Hey, Coach, congratulations on the, uh, on the win. This is Chris Matthews over at Channel A. Just kind of a hypothetical for you. If it Recording was in progress five, six, seven years down the road and, and you were out of the business already and you were watching this team from afar and you saw all that happened with the coach, the players, and, and they put this uh, guy with a ton of experience in as an interim head coach and, and, and you're watching this team and you see him lose five of six, but then you see him win four in a row and get to the playoffs. Would you be saying to yourself, man, this guy deserves more than just taking that interim tag off his name? <laughs> That's, that's a long-winning question. So um, I, I don't think six, seven, eight, nine, ten years from now I'm going to be watching much football. But uh, I certainly appreciate the question. Rich, when you took over, obviously winning's paramount in every game. But what are some of the other, I guess, intangibles? Or what, what did you want to do for this team to kind of bring it together and calm it down? And what was obviously a trying time for everybody. You know, again, <clears throat> I've said it multiple times. I think we, we've tried to develop a, a group of men that um, 
care about each other, know what to do, and compete with relentless effort. And um, that, that's, that's a hard team to beat. And, uh, and also, once they learn to respect each other's work, um, it's an enjoyable place to come to work and, and uh, to respond to whatever adversity or whatever prosperity may show up that day. It gives you an opportunity to forge your identity um, through the things in which you go through. So actions speak louder than words, and I think those guys have improved a little bit each day. Rich, with everything you guys have been through, especially the last four weeks and, and last night, just the push you made, do you need to guard – as a coach, you need to guard against complacency, maybe set it, setting in, hey, we accomplished something or, you know, with the playoffs coming up. You have such a quick turnaround here. How, how do you guard against that? Well, again, I think we've, we've had a one game, one practice, one play, one day mentality here for a long time now. Um, so I think they went through yesterday's um, victory and they, they took care of it last night in the locker room and, and guys have come in today as if it was uh, it's actually their day off and they've come in and kind of gotten their, their lift out of the way and some of them have turned the tape on and watched the tape and we won't have any formal meetings. Um, I've had conversations with players coming through the building and we're really, um, you know, we're on to, to what's next. We um, have a formal opponent in the Cincinnati Bengals. We have to leave on a Friday. It's a little bit of a short week. We're going to go up there and, and um, put our best foot forward, see if we can put a team on the field that our fans can be proud of. Hey, Rich, this is Tashawn Reed from The Athletic. Uh, obviously, you played the Bengals already this season. Um, you know, obviously, you, you know, there's been changes on both sides since then, but how helpful is that kind of having that context and having faced them to prepare for this game? Well, I, you know, anytime you get to play a team, but, you know, we've, we've, we've said before, we're going to play them with a different team we played them with before, and they're probably going to play us with different players than, than we played them with the first time. And, you know, we had the two turnovers in the fourth quarter, and, and they have a formidable – run game, you know, and mixing and what they're doing. I think they just had the rookie of the year and the receiver, who's a tremendous player. They had great chemistry with Burrow, um, you know, over there on offense. And, and uh, you know, we had trouble stopping him. I think he had 120, mixing 123 yards running the ball against us last time. And I talked about the turnover. So, again, we're going to um, investigate what we did well here over the last month and, and look at the things we need to correct. And we'll look at their tape and what they've done well and uh, hopefully some things we might be able to exploit and, and uh, be in position to go play a good game on on Saturday. Rich, this is Hondo Carpenter. Just quickly, sir, when you watch this game tape, were there some things that stood out to you in a positive way that from your view on field level, watching the game live, you couldn't see? I think I'd be ready for that question by now, Hondo. You ask it all the time. Um, again, I, I'd, I'd like to, to compliment our, our, our defensive front and, and, um, and the relentless effort in which they played with. And then, uh, you know, certainly we had some good opportunities uh, late. We had big runs by Josh, um, so the line matched up a little bit as the game went on and, and uh, did a good job of covering the guys up and gave Josh a little bit of a trust factor to, to make some of those big runs. And then certainly what you see on tape is the same thing you see ground level from, you know, Daniel Carlson and his ability to, to go out there. And when he gets an opportunity to play well, he, he does it time in and time again. So that would kind of be it for today. Hey, Rich, uh, last night we heard some of the players go out of their way to say how much uh, winning this game meant to them just for you, how much they enjoy playing for you. I, I know you don't like getting into that beyond the team, but I got to think in some ways that's uh, kind of an illustration of the way you put the relationships first and what you've said about playing for each other. So just with all that being said, how does that make you feel? Well, again, I think we've gone way back. You know, I think our entire coaching staff deserves credit for that. I think we're a relationship building um, group of coaches. We uh, We try to um, coach the man first and coach the player second. And I think they feel that, and I think they're a part of that as well. They, they make it easy for us to come to work and do that. So it was certainly a satisfying victory for everyone organizationally from, you know, owner Mark to, um, to everyone in the building and uh, to have the opportunity to get into the, the playoffs and, and the way in which you did it against a, a division opponent and, and to beat our, our place, our venue to do that in front of a blackout crowd and, and loud and excited. Um, Raider Nation fan base. So all the way around, I, 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 I'm excited about what we did, but certainly we'd like to think we have more ahead of us. 
Coach, just kind of specifically following up on that, a lot of the players posted uh, videos from the locker room of just the celebration and how happy they were. And it was such a, a jubilant scene. Like, what was it like to be a part of that? And uh, a lot of guys were singing and dancing. Did you? Did they get you involved? Were you? Uh, were you part of that at all? <laughs> did, did you? Did you participate? I don't know. Was it on video? Was, was I sing, dancing on video? So no. they say, right? Film speaks loud. But um, again, they earned that, you know, they earned the right to enjoy themselves after that game and, and um, celebrate in, in, in the fashion that was, um, they saw fit, you know, they're into the, the modern music and, and those things. And um, it was fun to watch them. It was fun to watch the emotions um, of what they've gone through. And, but again, I think they've, they've flipped the page and they've turned the corner and they've come back to work today and they've dug in um, to what they have to do in order to improve as the week goes on. And, and um, I think that's what we're all been doing. Coach, this is a kind of a remix of a Hondo's question, but was there a play from yesterday's game that kind of might have been overlooked or maybe, you know, not foreseen by the by the usual viewer that you feel won the game or really turned the momentum? You know, I I don't know if there's any one specific play, you know, that, that you lean on. Um, I don't really think I, I saw it that way. Hey, Rich, this is Vic. I'm wondering if... Um, what was the process like for you as far as getting more comfortable as head coach? Do you feel you've gotten more aggressive the last month and like kind of hit your stride a little bit? What's it been like for you kind of getting used to uh, being the head guy? Um, I, you know, I don't know. I, I think a lot of other people do a much better job of explaining to me than I do, to be honest with you. I think that some of the things that we've, we've gone forward on some of those situations, I think we felt like we had a good belief system in the package we had. Um, whether it would be Derek or whether it be Marcus or some of the things we were trying to do on offense. And then, again, I, I think where we really improved on defense is our space tackling. Um, we've played against a bunch of these really good run teams here lately and thought our, 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 our front seven, and then, but certainly our linebackers and DBs um, have done a really good job of, of making space tackles and at, um, for the most part, most of the time. So those are the areas we improved. I'm not really, you know, I think I was asked about my style and my, I, I don't really know. I just think. Like I said, I think a lot of other people are better explaining me than I do a good job of that. I don't do a very good job of that. Hey, Rich, well, then I'll take another stab at it. Uh, you know, how how have you changed then your coaching style or you, the way that you've coached? How have you changed as a coach? How have you matured? How have you evolved since taking this team over uh, in, under very strange circumstances? Do you well, I, I see don't. yourself as having grown or you approaching the day the same? Uh, no, I think we, we, we have to grow, right? If we don't grow, if we don't have a sense of humility um, and listen and learn and, and um, grow and improve, then you, you stay the same. And no, none of us stay the same. I, I don't think I've changed. I think I've learned a lot. I think I've learned a lot from um, having different conversations with, with Greg Olson. I've learned a lot from having different kind of conversation with, with Ole and, and um, excuse me, with Gus and then, you know, sitting down with Coach Marinelli. And then, you know, my conversations with players, with K.J. Wright and, and my opportunity now to visit with Derek Carr um, in a different way because he's the quarterback and I'm the head coach. So um, I'd like to think that I've improved. I'd like to think that I've grown in a positive way. Um, the same thing that we're trying to expect from our players. Um, um, and we do that in our meetings. We do that in our walkthroughs. And, and uh, I think we do that when we're individually talking about um, life matters. And we talk about, you know, these players have kids and we have kids. And, and so, um, again, I just think we, we get to come to an environment where we have the opportunity to um, be around each other, to have conversations about football, about life, and give ourselves, if we can have enough humility to listen. Um, and learn, then we'll, we'll have a chance to keep growing and improving and, and getting better in life, you know. Hopefully we can give some of those things back as we move along.